Hello, fourth graders, and welcome back to math. Today, we're going to be wrapping up our unit on customary units. We have been talking about how to measure customary units, whether we're talking about length, width, time, or capacity. And in the last few days, we talked about how to convert from one unit to another. And today we're going to wrap all of this up using word problems. So we're going to actually be reading word problems and using what we've learned about how to convert from one unit to another to apply what we know. I'm actually going to show you how to use your book. I hope that many of you have come, or your parents have come for you to pick up your math books from school. And I think this is going to eliminate some of the craziness that's that's been going on with online school for you to have your book there at home. Now, if you didn't get your book or your parents weren't able to come and get it, it's still okay. And you're still able to do everything that we're going to do at home. You're just going to need a pencil and a piece of paper. So I want you in just a moment to pause the video and go get your math book and a pencil. And if you don't have your math book, go get a piece of paper and a pencil and then come back and we'll be ready to work. All right, I'm assuming that you're back with me now. I'm assuming you've hit pause and you've gone and gotten what you needed. Now, if you'll look here, I have independent practice pulled up for lesson 12-5. And believe it or not, we've already gone through more than half of chapter 12 together. So if you wanna turn in your math book, it's page 649. Now to show you how to do word problems, I'm gonna simply do independent practice with you just like we would in class. So if you wanna to turn to page 649 with me, that would be great. And you may work along with me while I work on my marker board here. If you don't have your math book at home, just work on your piece of paper, just like you would if you were at school and you'd forgotten your math book at home. Now I'm going to show you actually how you're going to type into a document that you can turn in to Miss Gunn and myself. So your homework document is gonna look very much like this with an answer box for each one of your homework answers the way this one is. Okay, now you're not gonna be able to show all of your work in this box, which is why you're going to use your book. Or if you don't have your book, you're going to use your paper. Now let me show you, I'm going to um, jump over here to my iPad which is working as a document camera and we will work together um, on these problems right here. Now in my class I know for word problems and I think Miss Gunn's class does the same we use cubes when we're doing word problems so we circle our numbers we underline the question we're trying to answer we box in our keywords we eliminate all the extra stuff and then we solve and show our work. So we're going to be using that method to solve our word problems today. Let's scoot this over to the side so that we have room to work. I also have put here the picture of this gal with her chart. Now, it looks like a whole lot of information, but do you know what is so cool? You know all of the stuff. We've learned it all. Now, I don't expect that you're going to have all of those terms memorized. It's okay if you don't know exactly how many pints are in a gallon, but you do want to know some of the basics, like there's 12 inches in a foot, and there's 36 inches in a yard, and there's four quarts in a gallon, and there's six 16 ounces and a pound. So some of those basic things you want to have memorized, but I know that you've just learned them. So here is this chart for you to refer back to. Now in your book, this chart is on page 642. You're going to want to bookmark that. Um, those of you who don't have the book, it's also included on tonight's homework on the homework file that I'm sharing with you. It's the first page there for you to refer back to because we're going to have to convert some of our units to do some of our word problems. So let's get started on our independent practice. Let's pull it over here, and I'm gonna leave the gal right up here at the top so we can continue to see, and this hopefully will come into focus on that problem there. All right, let's read this first one. A limousine is 240 inches long. A pickup truck is 19 feet long, which is longer. Well, our initial thought is 240 inches, and 19 feet, those are our two numbers that we know, which is longer. What we can't do is we can't compare inches with feet. We have to 
convert. We have to convert them to be the same unit. So we know that a limo, let's scoot this over just a little bit and we're gonna use L for a limo. A limo is 240 inches. And we're gonna think a pickup truck, we're gonna use T for a pickup truck, is how many inches? Well, if it's 19 feet long, we have to do some math and we know 19 feet times how many inches in each foot? 12, that's exactly right. So we have to do 19 feet times 12 inches in each foot. We know how to do this. Nine times two is 18, that's correct. Carry your one. Two times one is two, plus one is three. Now we're multiplying by the one, but it's actually a 10, so we put our zero in this place. One times nine is nine, one times one is one, and that was from our first time around. Now with our two partial products, what do we do? We add them together, and I'm running out of room. I hope you can see. Eight plus zero is eight. Nine plus three is 12, carrier one. One plus one is two. So the truck that was 19 feet long is the same thing as 228 inches. So going back to our question over here, which one is longer? The answer is the pickup truck. And how do we know? Because we just showed all of our work here. For now, I want you to just leave that right there and I'm going to show you how we're going to enter this in online in just a moment. Let's erase this work. And let's move on to number five here. Which container holds more? A gallon jug, a three quart pitcher, or a five pint bowl? Okay, so we're comparing gallon, one gallon, three quarts, or five pints. So one gallon, three quarts, or five pints. So what I would do on this one, I believe, is I think I would convert them all to how many cups are in each one. So let's look at our capacity units here. And we know that in a pint, every pint has two cups right here. So five pints, let's start down here. Five pints times two cups is how many cups? 10 cups total. Three quarts, we need to figure out how many cups are in three quarts. Well, one quart equals two pints. One quart also equals how many cups? Four cups. So three times four cups is 12 cups. One gallon, we learned, do you remember that capacity video with my boys in there? We learned that in a gallon, there's how many cups? Do you remember? If you don't, let's zip back to our chart. One gallon is four quarts, and each quart has four cups. So four times four is 16. So there's 16 cups in a gallon. Our question, if we come back to it, is which container holds more? The gallon jug, the three quart pitcher, or a five pint bowl? Well, which one holds the most? The gallon jug, 16 is more than 12 and 10. So our answer here is the gallon jug. All right, let's keep going on to number six. Julia and her brother went deep sea fishing. They caught a spotted sea trot weighing five pounds, 10 ounces. Ooh, those are some numbers we're gonna need. And they caught a snook weighing eight pounds, four ounces, and a redfish wing, a redfish weighing 176 ounces, which was the largest fish they caught. So we're going to have to convert each one of these into ounces. So our question is, which was the largest? And so there's a sea trot, a snook, and a redfish. So let's do sea trot, snook, and redfish. Okay, the sea trot was five pounds, 10 ounces. So five pounds plus 10 ounces. 
Now, how much is in five pounds? Well, to figure that out, we have to do, we, well, we have to look up here. Let's look up here. And each pound, there are 16 ounces. So we have to do 16 times five. 16 times five. Six times five is 30. Carry your three. Five times one is five plus three is eight. So five pounds is 80 ounces plus 10 ounces. So we can do that in our head. We know, what was it called, a sea trout? It's 90 ounces. We already know that the redfish was 176 ounces. So now we need to solve for the snook. A snook was eight pounds, four ounces. So let's do that one, eight pounds, four ounces. Oh, whoops, I just realized I'm writing off where you can see. So let's do it up here. We'll do eight pounds, four ounces. Now for every pound, we know there's how many ounces? 16, so we have to do 16 times eight to figure out how many ounces there are. Six times eight is? 48, carry your four. Eight times one is eight, plus four is 12. So 128 ounces plus four more ounces is 132 ounces for the snook. Now, which one was the largest fish they caught? Look at them, 176, 132, or 90? 176, so the answer is the redfish. So we would come back here and we would write the redfish. Now let's stop right there and I'm going to jump over and show you how to get this information online. So pickup truck, a gallon jug, and the redfish. Those are our answers. So let me jump from here and I'm going to go back to sharing my screen with my computer screen. Um, number four, the answer is um, a pickup truck. It says type answer here. Well, you want to click in there. Once you have your answer, you want to click. And when you click, do you see it highlights it? Then you wanna put your cursor, see the, the four-way arrow? If I start clicking that, I'm gonna move my text box. I actually wanna click where my cursor goes right there to the words, and I'm going to delete type answer here. I don't need that information. And my answer is what? A pickup truck. And so you're going to type in pickup truck there for your answer. You're now done with that text box. We know that number five, our answer was a gallon jug. So you're going to click to select the box, find your cursor, there it is. See my, how my cursor changes? Click it, go to the end, delete all of that text there, and our answer is gallon jug. If your answer is a number, you would type in the number there. If your answer says explain, you would explain. Let's say you clicked here and you thought, oh, I want to delete this text box. And so, I mean, delete that text in the box and you accidentally hit delete. <gasps> what did I just do? I deleted the whole text box. Well, you can do a couple of different things to solve this problem. First of all, as soon as you realize you did it, go right up here to this button that has the arrow pointing backwards. I showed this to my class earlier on Zoom. Click that button and it puts it right back there for you. That's called the undo button and it'll put it right back there for you. Now, you click inside the text box, find your cursor and delete that text. Now, let me show you something else that you can do. Let's say you've deleted your text box. You don't know where it went. You've tried clicking undo. You can't figure it out. There is a button right here that says text box. Yours might look a little bit different because my computer is a Mac, but somewhere you have a button right up here that says text box. You can click on that button and you can draw your own text box and then you can write, our answer on this one is redfish, and you can write redfish right there. Whoops, I'm not a ref fish, a red fish. There we go. And then you have your answer written right there. And when you click off of it, you can see your answer redfish is there in, the, in your own text box that you drew. Okay, but this button right up here, this undo button, man, it is gonna be your good friend because 
we make mistakes, don't we? And when we make that mistake, you can, you can click that undo button and it fixes it for you. So let's say you hadn't made that mistake, you would type in redfish right here. Now, if I were to keep going, I would answer number seven and write it here too. I'm afraid I'm about to run out of time on our lesson. And so I'm trying to wrap things up here so that you'll know how to do your homework tonight. Now on your homework assignment, the, the, front, the first page is going to be an explanation and it's going to be this chart with this gal who has all of your conversions there. She's going to be very helpful for you. Then the next page is going to look much like this one. It's going to be your homework where you put your answers in. Now something very important, let me go back to my main screen. Something very important, when you show your work on your math paper or on your separate piece of paper. Don't throw it away. Hang on to it. If you're writing in a separate on a separate piece of paper, make a folder or something at home where you save your math papers. If you're writing in your math book, I would just leave it right there so you don't lose it. That way, Miss Gunn and I can come back and help you if you're having trouble. We can look at the work that you've shown and we can see where maybe something went wrong or where, where the breakdown is where you're struggling. If we don't have any work to show, then we don't know where to start to help you. So don't throw away your work, even though you're only writing your answers on this paper for me. I want you to save the work where you've done those things. Okay, now remember your conversion charts are all going to be there. You don't have to have those things memorized. The biggest key today, the biggest key is you have to get your things that you're comparing, your two different items in the same units. So if you have feet and inches, you wanna go down to the smaller unit. If you have pounds and ounces, you wanna convert them all down to that smaller unit. So convert them all to ounces. If you have tons and pounds, you're gonna to wanna to convert them down to pounds. And you saw on the one where I was comparing gallons and quarts and pints, I actually converted them all down to cups, which was one of the smallest units there. It's not as small as an ounce, but it was a smaller unit than all of those things so that we're able to compare them. Also, don't forget cubes. You circle your numbers, underline your keywords, I mean, underline your question, box in your keywords, eliminate your extra info, solve and show your work. I hope you all are having a great time in math. I hope you're enjoying the work that we're doing, the hands-on measurement. It's really fun because it's really everyday life math. If you have any questions, please talk to me or to Miss Gunn at our Zoom or send us an email and we're happy to help you one-on-one -on -one as well. We're really proud of you and the work that you're doing. I'm really excited that we're wrapping up week two and we're about to head into week three. In the meantime, this is the last time I will see you before Easter weekend. I hope you all have a wonderful three-day weekend and enjoy Easter with your families. I know it's gonna be different because we're just in our own homes, but take advantage of that family time. I hope you have a great Easter remembering the resurrection of our Savior. I love you, never forget.